All right, welcome everyone. Um, this, it, to make sure you're in the right session, this is the health education, health promotion, and social emotional learning um, session with Susan Berry. I'm the health education health promotion specialist here at the Department of Education. And glad to have you here. Jean, does it look like we're recording? Yes. yes. Are. Okay. Um, all right. So this session is divided into half. The first half is going to be talking about the understanding, understanding how we connect health education and social emotional learning so they work together for student success. And the second half, we're going to share, explore, and practice a few quick and doable self-care tools and ideas and get your engagement as well. And then we're going to be blessed with an experience for of yoga with Christina, Christina Stade. Uh, yoga techniques we can do anywhere, anytime for ourselves or even with students. So I'm going to start right in talking about the what health education is and social emotional learning. So in the proposed main learning results for 2022 for health education and physical education, we have an opening introduction that goes like this. The health education, physical education standards and performance expectations represent the essential knowledge and skills students need to be healthy individuals and lifelong learners. Being a lifelong learner involves the awareness and understanding of health and physical literacy. Personal health literacy is a degree to which individuals have the ability to find, understand, and use information and services to inform health-related decisions and actions for themselves and others. Physical literacy is the ability to move the competence and confidence in a wide variety of physical activities in multiple environments that benefit the healthy development of the whole person. And we go on to call out social and emotional learning is naturally embedded in both health education and physical education. Students participate in an inclusive learning environment that values the interests of all main children through opportunities to learn and practice social and emotional skills and behaviors. So very clearly laid out, there's the connection between health education as well as physical education and social emotional learning. In the proposed standards, the health education introduction specific to health education states that highly effective health education programs provide students with knowledge and the skills to thrive physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially across their lifetime. Health education can assist students to be better consumers of information, manage the complex world around them, and be more inclusive of others. Through an effective skills-based health education curriculum, students will practice skills that protect, promote, and enhance lifelong health. This is important to keep in mind as we move on. So the proposed main learning results, I just wanted to give you this quick screenshot. These are the six standards, very few, very little difference in the current standards. But I show you this because we're going to see and share resources that are around the national health education standards. There are eight of those. They are, they are the same standards and alignment, except that they have communication and advocacy separate and decision making and goal setting separate, where we've combined them here in Maine. So keep that in mind. So, Castle, um, who are the experts in social emotional learning, talk about social emotional learning being an integral part of education and human development. SEL is a process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to develop healthy identities, manage emotions, and achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. I'm going to guess that sounds pretty familiar to most people because as we just saw, you'll find same language in the introduction to health education and to health education and physical education and even in the uh, titles of our standards. Looking at the competencies for social emotional learning, we have self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness, all components of health education. And we go around the circles outside in this model. Social emotional learning includes instruction and classroom climate. So how 
we what we learn, but as well as how we behave in the classroom. And then it goes out to talk about school-wide culture, practices, and policies, the supports that are necessary to support our students and the adults, um, their social and emotional well-being. Keeping out even further, the families and caregivers are key partners, as well as other state agencies and organizations to supporting the work of social emotional learning. And we need our communities as well. So it's a culture and climate. When we talk about social emotional learning, it's not a curriculum, it's an approach, a model that includes aspects of the curriculum. So I'm assuming this probably sounds familiar to most people. It's very, um, it's grounded in coordinated school health programs and the whole school, whole community, whole child model, all working together to, to support our students. I want to give credit where credit's due. I'm gonna share some information very quickly with you. And it comes from Mary Connolly's book that was published with Shape America, Teaching Social and Emotional Learning in Health Education. Excellent resource, I highly recommend it. We're gonna look at um, some aspects of that today. There is also a complimentary um, resource for physical education for those who teach both. So when we talk about health education and social emotional learning connecting, the competencies and subcompetencies for social emotional learning share a synergy with the health education standards and performance expectations. They're both skills based and taught together will provide the health content and personal and social skills to reinforce personal health and help students and, and adults navigate life's challenges. Social emotional learning competencies and subcompetencies can be woven into the health education curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And that's where Mary Connolly's book does an excellent job of laying right out how that happens without even having to think about it. And then it's recommended that SEL competencies be woven actually into all content standards. It's not just health education or just physical education, but really it needs to be across the board so that students are hearing the information on an ongoing basis. It's been part of health education since the beginning. Um, and this is a way of reinforcing those key competencies and skills. And best practices in social emotional learning would be that in this interdisciplinary learning approach, it be there as well as the content. So I'm gonna stop sharing for just a moment. Just see if folks had any questions or reflections on what I just shared. You can just turn off your, turn on your camera and wave or just put your hand up. All right, oh, we have a couple things in the chat. This will, the presentation will be shared, yes. So thank you, thank you, Jean, for that. All right, I'm gonna continue on. Okay. So another resource that is really important that I found is from Shape America as well is a health education and social emotional learning crosswalk. This is based on the national health education standards. So when I mentioned before the alignment between the national and main standards, um, this is why, because when you use this document, just look for the main standard that aligns to the national standard and it'll be very useful and helpful. So I'm going to share the document with you because I decided why reinvent the wheel when it existed in this document. And this, by the way, is available. You'll be able to access it through this PowerPoint, but also you can access it on the web. So they give a brief overview of the crosswalk, talking about the components. And then there's a nice, for lack of another term, almost looks like a scope and sequence that shows what standard aligns to what castle for competency. Then it talks about the SEL and equity aspect and the critical practices. So they go through each one of the standards and show where that alignment is. And I'm not gonna read through all of them. I'm just wanting to highlight that in the document. 
So when you get into the document, it takes each one of the standards and shows which of the competencies and the subcompetencies align. So for this one, standard one, self-awareness is one of the alignments. And then it goes on, breaks it down by each grade span to show. So for this performance indicator or expectation, these are the subcompetencies that align directly to them. And it goes right through each grade span. And then it gives these great examples. So it talks here about um, if it's cold and flu season and Manny does not want to get sick, et cetera, et cetera. It then says, you know, identifying that be healthy behaviors such as washing and drying your hands before lunch affect personal health. Well, that aligns to the SEL competency of self-awareness, accurate self-perceptions, recognizing strengths and self-confidence. And in Mary Conley's book, it goes to the next level of showing exactly what that looks like in the curriculum and in, de in developing curriculum. And how do you assess that? How do you assess the competencies as well as the standards and performance expectations? So it goes right on through. Now we get to standard two and we have social awareness. And we keep going down through and I won't be going through all of them, but we go to standard two and we have self-awareness. So it's, if there's more than one competency aligned to the standard, it outlines both of them for you. So you have the examples and you have the information that are in them. I'm going to be using the self-awareness competency, for examples today, only because in Maine, we have growing our self-awareness as our theme for self uh, SEL day. So I thought, well, I would do that because if we were to go through all of these specifically and in detail, it would take us all afternoon or be an all day event. So I did not want to do that. So here, the standard students analyze the influence of family, peers, culture, media, technology, and other factors on health behaviors. So the self-awareness is the ability to accurately recognize one's own emotions, thoughts, and values, and how they influence others. So we have our influences there and the folks that they're influenced. The ability to accurately assess one's strengths and limitations with a well-grounded sense of confidence, optimism, and a growth mindset. So clear alignment, and then we get down to the performance indicators. We have the sub-competencies that are aligned right out. So identify how the family influences personal health practices and behaviors. Sub-competencies would be identifying emotions, accurate self-perceptions, recognizing strengths, confidence, and self-efficacy. And we have, again, another example down here of how that would look as we were creating the curriculum. So again, I'm not gonna go through each one of these because all of you will have access to that and be able to do it. But I wanted to show what a great resource and tool this is that Shape America created that folks can um, easily access and use. So when we're being asked, are we covering and talking about social emotional learning in our health education curriculum? This is a tool that can easily help people identify where you're probably already doing it, but not calling it out or how you can tweak things to call it out and be a little more specific with that. All right, now I've got to figure out how to get back to my PowerPoint. There we go. Jean, can you just tell me you're seeing my PowerPoint again? Sorry, yes. Okay. I was mute, so I have to unmute. <laughs> That's right, I just wanted to make sure I made the transition. Um, so again, this is a great tool that will be available. You can link that document. You can download it free if you're a uh, um, Shape America member and have that available. And again, I would recommend Mary Conley's book, and that's available, I believe, on the uh, Shape America website, but also through Amazon. I'm going to stop Mary again for a couple of minutes here. Uh, what I'd like to talk about, and I'd love if some folks would be willing to turn your cameras on and, and turn your um, mics on to be able to talk a little bit about what some examples would be of how we would apply this to curriculum when we think about how do we develop a curriculum 
that has both health education and the competencies for social emotional learning. And in Mary's book, I've got it right here in front of me. Um, she does a great job of taking each one of the competencies and aligning them to each one of the standards and showing how that, how you design backwards for developing a unit. For example, I'm gonna just use self-awareness and um, a lesson plan around in standard one around bicycle safety. So for early elementary, if we were talking about bicycle safety, we would align that to self-awareness, accurate self-perceptions and recognizing strengths. So we're talking about bicycle safety, we're talking about injury prevention, we're talking about um, this way. So for instance, we can talk about, let's skip, skip the page, sorry about that. Influences. Think about if we were listing ways to prevent common childhood injuries, in this case to the head, identify how the family influences the personal health practices and behaviors around bicycle safety. Then we think about, okay, what is the self-awareness, recognizing strengths, what can we do? Can we practice the behaviors that we need to? Can we talk to the people um, who have influences on us about those practices? Can we explain what would happen if we didn't wear our, our, our helmets? So looking for students to be able to do that and the influences that family and or friends might have on whether we practice those healthy behaviors. So the connections are clearly woven together um, when we look at, when we lay it right out side by side here. Another example could be in the um, middle level, the three five is thinking about sun safety. So if we're talking about sun safety, we're talking about wearing sunscreen, hats, umbrellas, we're describing the relationship between healthy behaviors, such as practicing sun safety and personal health. We're identifying how peers influence health, healthy and unhealthy behaviors such as sun safety. And then we think about, okay, so where are we influenced with these sub competencies and the standards? And we're talking about self-awareness, accurate self-perceptions, and recognizing strengths. Um, and again, that can be assessed, both the standard or performance indicator, as well as the competencies. And they have lesson plans laid right out in here of how you might do that. Um, I would, if anybody wants to unmute or come off camera and share how you would do that, please feel free to, to, to um, share your thoughts or ideas, or tell us what you're already doing. Cause I'm gonna guess most of you probably already do this, but may not know how to call it out or to show or make those links and connections. I'm gonna jump ahead just for, cause I know this is a quick session just to highlight how we make these connections. But I'm gonna jump ahead to give a middle school example. So if we think about self-awareness and influences on advertising, influences of advertising on tobacco or vaping, then we make those connections to what students are looking for. The potential series, seriousness of injury or illness if engaging in unhealthy behaviors, such as vaping. Describe ways that technology influences personal health, such as advertising for vaping products. That clearly is self-awareness and self-efficacy when we're talking about curriculum. And we can lay that right out there uh, with our students. And a great example of, that I really liked in the book with high school, there are many of them, by the way, um, the high school level was talking about um, self-awareness and a growth mindset. So talking with our students about what is a growth mindset and what does that mean and looking at that and identifying the healthy behaviors such as participating in a group affects personal health or identifying how peers influence healthy and unhealthy behaviors when working in a group. And we can look at self-awareness and a growth mindset and teaching our students explicitly rather than implicitly about that can make a huge difference. Um, and, and the takeaway 
and the ability to understand that. So that's a lot of talking. Can I see if you have any questions either in the chat box or if you wanna raise your hand or unmute? Quiet group, We're so glad that you're here. So I, again, I just wanna reiterate that we've been teaching health education has been teaching social emotional learning for a lot of years um, it's since its inception. And I think having the strength of social emotional learning woven in with and aligned to health education is a win-win for everyone. And so the health education brings in the content. We look at specific areas that we wanna have growth in and the competencies come and support the implementation of and skill development around health literacy and healthy behaviors and carrying those on. Without reinventing the wheel, I highly recommend, not that I'm, I'm going to get no commissions for this, but this is an excellent resource that you would like and to have that other um, one that's in the PowerPoint that I was sharing would be great. There's also one for, um... Physical education. Yes. Yes. And it looks just like this one. Only says physical education and content obviously is different. So yeah, Jean has it right there. Oh, hers is blue. Sorry. So it's a great resource. Great resource. All right. Any thoughts or questions? Lots of information that I put out to you. All right. I'm going to share my screen again, because we're just about at the point, if there aren't any questions or comments, so we're gonna shift into the second half of our session, which is gonna be about self-care. Show that this works. And we're gonna start off our self-care uh, session by doing a one minute breathing exercise. So I'm going to click and hope that my link works. And this is going to pause it for a second. This is a great quick tool that anybody can access on YouTube. And it's called the breathing box. And you just follow the red dot and follow the let's see, that sounds up there. Follow the instructions. And for one minute, it's a great way to just like to decompress. So here we go. Breathe in. Back to seeing my slides. Yes. Thank you. So the self-care tools and ideas. This section we're just gonna I'm gonna share some ideas. I want any of you to share ideas, explore and practice some quick and doable self-care tools such as the one we just did. And we will be having um, Christina do some yoga techniques that can be done anywhere, anytime with us very soon. So you could Google or search the web and find lots of self-care ideas. And I've done that many times with the work that I do and come up with lots of different um, things that folks can engage in and each person is a little different so you find a list and you look and you say well yeah i do that oh i never thought about that or mm, that's not for me and that's okay so you find those lists you kind of help you prompt some new thoughts what's reasonable and doable for you and i would encourage all of you to make your own self-care list what's what are your top 10 or your top 20 things that you would like to do is it that you like to be outside? So taking a walk in nature, that you want to sleep in on the weekends because you feel like you never get enough during the week. It could be unplugging from social media to spend time with friends. Um, but then again, social media can be positive for some people. It's exercising at different levels, taking care of yourself. Um, it's taking yourself out of a situation sometimes at that for at least a period of time before to get in. I also added um, in this on this slide is engaging all your senses. And if you click on that, there is a link to a great five senses meditation that's just, I 
just shy of five minutes. That's really good. But taking time for yourself is really important. And additionally, here's another whole slide. You can see there are so many different ones, might be a couple of um, duplicates on there. And it looks, you when you think about self-care, you wanna think about your physical health, your mental health, your social health. With the pandemic, there are folks struggling with the social limitations, financial health, occupational health. It's all different aspects of our health and well-being, our intellectual well-being. For some people, it's digging into a book. It's taking a class. Um, for others, it's a time of prayer or quiet solitude or meditation. There are just so many different aspects of what people can do. So you need to think about what would work best for you. Kind of like the one that's call a friend that makes you laugh. Or sometimes you need to call a friend who you can just cry with to get something out. But there are different um, opportunities. I also wanted to share this list of tools, and resources that are apps and podcasts and giving credit to the folks who shared. The Main School Site Health Promotion Program Planning Committee offered up their, some of their favorite podcasts and apps in the Wednesday Wellness email that I send out every other week. And if anybody is interested in receiving that um, email, it's a quick message of self-care around health and wellness that goes out every other week, email me at susan.berry at maine.gov and I will add you to my distribution list. Um, so some of these are probably familiar to folks. Some might be new. Ones like Calm have been around and we see that one a lot on TV too and Headspace and Spotify is actually a fairly new one, I believe, and they have a specific daily wellness one that was just brought to my attention, and Virgin Pulse. They have some free pieces, but then you might pay for an upgrade at a, for a nominal fee. So you don't have to do that. There's lots of great free pieces if you don't wanna um, pay in a fee. But some of these are around fitness, some are overall wellness, some are very much focused on the mental health and well-being. Some are a little bit more spiritual than others. So finding an app that will work for you and help you to stay centered and have a reasonable amount. So some folks like, I just need a 30 second, one minute thing a day, and that's my go-to. And then we have the podcast. By the way, most of the apps are also online or mobile. We can do them either way. The podcast, the happiness lab, routines and ruts are, are fun ones to look at. One of the favorites is Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's on YouTube. You just have to Google him. He has all kinds of different uh, YouTube TED Talks. We have the Financial Ramsey Show. It's a financial wellness piece. Again, we're looking at the different aspects of folks' health and well-being. So these are some that I hope that folks will explore and also find that you like them. And please, if you have others, I'm looking for you to share those in just a moment, as a matter of fact. Like right now, I'm going to click. And what I'd like to do is ask folks, make D for putting that in there. Oops, okay, there we go. I just dropped into the chat box, the link to this Jamboard. And if you're not familiar with the Jamboard, I'm gonna show you how to utilize it. But I like to have folks post your ideas and or your resources and tools. So to do that, you go to this toolbar on the left. The fourth one down is a post-it note. You choose a color and you add a note. So I'm gonna add walk the puppies. If you wanna do another one, you just start typing another one. But something that is a good self-care, something that helps you, um, something you've heard from other people that you think is a really great idea. And then again, resources or tools that you're aware of that um, folks can tap into. And if you just post us on either side, and then I will, what I plan to do is take a screenshot of these, pop it into the, PowerPoint, 
and share that. Um, when I share the PowerPoint out, I will have these um, included in it. So. Over here. Drag that down. Awesome. Finding time for that extra sleep, playing with the dog, playing with the puppies, walking the puppies. Going to breakfast is always a great one for me. That's like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Saturday morning breakfast or Sunday morning breakfast out. This is great. Ah, baking or doing yourself projects. Great. Decluttering, decluttering the office, decluttering the house. Movie night, I love it. I added Zoom coffee breaks or social hours. When we can't get to be with those folks we, we love or have, enjoy spending time with. Music, yes. Listen to music, absolutely. And I'm gonna add, just to think about that, you know, Pandora and different programs like that, Spotify and Pandora, they have lots of great different types of music that are free and available, Prime, um, Amazon Prime. So there's lots of those available. This is great. Please continue to drop any um, in there. If you have any additional ones or ideas and, and share those with me, these are wonderful. Ooh, swimming and exercise, indoor or outdoor, depending on what you like and depending on the season. I bet folks could enjoy a hot tub on that too if you're have access to a pool and a hot tub. <laughs> Snowshoeing in the woods, awesome. Great, great. Yes, even just getting out in the woods, we just have to be safe and watch out for the, the ticks and um, brown tail moths. Golf, awesome. And that can be something folks like to do individually or with a group of people. So some of these things are, are quiet by yourself, and some of these are things you want to in, be engaged with other people. So again, those different aspect, aspects of our health and well-being. So wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for sharing and continuing to share. That is great. Okay, I think I can go back here. And hopefully you can see my screen again. If you can't, tell me, Jean. And uh, not yet. Not yet? No. Did I not share it correctly? Oops. Can you see my screen now with a video coming up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is another YouTube that I would encourage folks. It's a one minute breathing to take a little bit of just a moment to say, OK, I can do I can do this, I can make it through. And this one comes from Calm. So I'm gonna open it up, get it started, and we can inhale. I'm gonna go back to the beginning and play. Inhale, it goes larger. Exhale, the bubble goes down. your eyes or you can watch the sphere go around.
So again, there are lots of those available that folks can see. Can you see my PowerPoint now, Jean? Yes. All right. Let's stop sharing for just a moment. Any other thoughts? Again, if you have additional ideas, please drop them into the Jamboard and I will be putting that out. And I wanted to say to folks, please drop your email into the chat box and I will make sure that these resources get emailed directly to you, but they will also be posted on the website. But if you'd like me to send them directly a link or send the PowerPoint right to you or a PDF of the PowerPoint, I'm happy to do that so that you have that readily available to you. All right. I say, um, I just really enjoy watching Stacy's background. <laughs> that is so calming. I just keep thinking of Baxter State Park, but um, anyway. All right. So this time we have, um, we're going to be blessed with another experience of self care. And Christina is going to talk to us about some different types of yoga that folks can do with their students, with for yourself, um, and just enjoy. So she's got about 10 to 15 minutes for, for us. So you should be able to share your screen. So I am, I don't have a screen to share. It's just oh, going to okay. be. Um, so I'm Christina. Um, I'm a certified yoga teacher. I'm just going to take you through, like she said, 10 to 15 minutes, um, just some movements and exercises, breathing exercises that you can do in a chair, or you can just do it um, comfortably seated on the floor. Um, and then by the end of it, we'll end with like a calming uh, body scan um, and a quick meditation. And so Christina, I'm just going to yeah. let folks know if they put it into stand into speaker view, then you yeah. become the bigger part of the screen. So that might be helpful for folks if you don't already have it in speaker view to do that. Okay. Perfect. And if you could just give me a two minute warning, that would be really nice. Yes. Okay. So finding a nice comfortable seated position or just sit up nice and tall in your, in your chair or seat. You could also sit on a pillow. It helps to lengthen the spine. So you're sitting up straight. Bring your shoulders up and back, engaging the belly. You can close your eyes for the first couple of moments to just check in with your body, see how you're feeling. Your hands can be relaxed in your lap or place them on your knees, or maybe just place on the top, palms facing down on your lap. Take a big breath in through the nose, fill up your lungs. Exhale out through your mouth almost like you're fogging up a mirror with your exhale. We'll do a couple more breaths like that. Big breath in through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth, exhale. Two more of those. Inhale for a count of four. Exhale for your count of four. One more of those, inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four. Now place your hand, one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. We're just gonna feel our own breath. Big breath in through the nose. Now breathe out through your nose. Feel your chest rise. Feel the breath come out. A couple more breaths like that. One more breath in together. Breathe out. Take your hands out towards the sides. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, palms come to your heart. Working with your breath. Inhale, reach up slowly, reaching up nice and tall. Exhale, palms come to your heart. 
One more, just like that. Big breath in, reach out. Exhale, palms come to your heart. This time we're gonna inhale, reach up. Exhale, left arm over, right hand to the side. You could also place it on your left side body. So reaching up nice and long, opening up your side for three, two, inhale, reach back up. Exhale to the left side, right arm reaches, left arm out towards the side or place on your right side body. For three, two, inhale, reach up. Exhale, palms come to your heart. Place your hands at your sides. For this next one, you can reach your legs long. So if you're sitting on the floor in front of you, or just have your legs straight in the chair. You're gonna inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. So arch your back, relax your head. If you're on the floor, you can bend your knees slightly. Also, they're already bent in the chair. Just allow your body to kind of hang, just relax. Stretching out your lower back, continuing to breathe. Relax the neck. Tuck your chin, slowly come back up to your seat. We're gonna stretch out the leg. So taking one knee in towards your chest, lying down or sitting in the chair. Straighten that leg out. Inhale, the left knee in towards your chest. Breathing in through your nose, out through your nose. Extend both legs out, just sitting in the chair comfortably again. Sitting up tall. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist over to your right side. Keep a nice long spine. You can look straight ahead or look over the right shoulder if it feels okay on your neck. Inhale, back to center, reach up. Exhale, twist your left. Staying here or looking over the left shoulder. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, palms come to your heart. Relax your hands on your knees or your lap. Take your shoulders up, back and down trying to feel any tension they may have in your shoulders and seeing if you can release it. One more time, shoulders up, back and down. And then bring your shoulders forward, down and back. Just a couple of times, moving nice and slow, noticing your body, noticing any tension. One more time, forward. And relax your arms. Inhale, right ear to right shoulder. Sitting up nice and tall. Take your chin to your chest, stretching out the back of your neck. Left ear comes to left shoulder. And if it feels okay, you can look up towards the ceiling. Inhale your crown of your head towards the, the ceiling, sitting up nice and tall, belly engaged, shoulders up and back. And we'll come into our meditation part of the sequence. 
Relaxing the eyelids, sitting in a nice, comfortable position. Take a big breath in through the nose. Full breath out through the mouth. One more big breath in. Big breath out. Allowing your body to settle in your seat or on the floor. Bringing awareness to your body and how you're feeling in this moment. Notice the breath coming in through the nose and out through the nose. Relax your legs, your feet, your toes, ankles. Relax the knees your hips, allow the belly to relax, relax the chest, the ribs, relax your shoulders, your arms, elbows, relax the wrists, the palms, all of your fingers and your thumbs. Relax the neck, the throat, your jaw. Allow your teeth to separate, relaxing the tongue. Relax your forehead eyebrows, eyelids, relax your forehead, relax your whole head, the back of the head, the back of the neck, back of the shoulders, all the way down the back of your back, the whole back of your body. Your whole body is relaxed. See how much tension you can release in the body, just breathing into that space, and then kind of just melting the tension away. For the next couple of moments, we're just gonna be mindful, give our body this opportunity to just be here in this moment, breathing in through your nose, out through your nose. I will watch the time so you don't have to worry. Slowly coming back to your body, wiggle your fingers and your toes. Flick your eyelids open once or twice. And we'll end with one breath together. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, palms come to your heart. Thank you guys so much for being here and practicing with me. That was great, Christina. Thank you so much. and so relaxing. <laughs> Very relaxing. But I just want to 
share again the thanks to Christina for agreeing to do this for us and lead us all through this that we all so much greatly need. And I want to thank you all for being here. I encourage you to take care of yourselves and be the drop in the water with a ripple effect as you share your learning with your colleagues, your friends, your, your loved ones, and take that learning and take care of yourselves as well. All right. Anybody have any last things they'd like to share? Again, I'll remind folks, if you want me to send you the PowerPoint this afternoon, just drop your email right into the chat box and I will grab that. And if you would like to be signed up for the Wednesday wellness email that goes out every other week with additional self-care and wellness information, I'm happy to add you to that. Just email me directly on that one and I will add you. Thank you to Christina, very much appreciated. It's great. And I wish you all another, a great rest of the day and a wonderful weekend. You have access to the rest of the hashtag SEL day uh, resources. There are some more sessions coming up. We have a two o'clock and then at three o'clock, Kelly Bailey will close out the day for us. And then all the recordings, if you were not able to participate are available um, throughout the weekend on um, you can just access those and the materials will be posted. I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna happen, but it'll be posted. So keep an eye out. And there are also some wonderful international SEL day resources to take advantage of. So thank you all for being here and have a wonderful rest of your day.